What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Cool G rap record, Return of the Dawn, out two weeks ago, June 2nd. Still recovering from getting like four or five cavities filled on this side of my mouth. You know that saying, I feel like a million bucks? Well, I feel like $500,000 of student loan debt with 8% adjustable rate loans. I, I'm surprised at how many days later it hurts. It was last Monday and I guess, I guess the soreness just takes a while. Anyway, I'm really glad that Cool G Rap put this record out because it kind of forced me to do a video on him. Cause one of the videos that I've had tucked away that I've wanted to do for a very long time and just haven't gotten to yet is a video on G Rap's third record with DJ Polo, Live and Let Die which is hitting its 25th anniversary this year and is one of my favorite rap albums ever. Honestly, it's worth doing this review just to mention that record because it's just this pinnacle of conceptual storytelling in hip hop. Many of the individual songs on that record as well as individual verses have these incredibly rich beginning, middle and end narratives that like pull you in almost like mini movies. Songs like On The Run and my personal favorite, the hilarious classic song Operation Cogblock and the overwhelming influence that shit like this would have on people like Biggie and Nas, you cannot overstate that. And then elsewhere on that album, you have the songs with just the monstrous lyrical bars like Go For Your Guns or Two To The Head, the epic posse cut with Ice Cube and Scarface and Bushwick Bill. I mean, Live and Let Die, what's so great about that record is it's like the perfect summation of Cool G Rap's legacy. Because on one hand, he helped pioneer this style of violent, in-depth storytelling and what would eventually become the mafioso rap subgenre. But on the other hand, his out-of-this-world technical skill with his rapid-fire flow and intricate multi-syllable rhymes helped pave the way for people like Big Pun. So Live and Let Die showcases both those ends of his legacy and his influence. So yeah, Live and Let Die was my introduction to G-Rap and it's still probably my favorite record, but I also loved his solo albums from the 90s, 456 and Roots of Evil. And when I was in that phase, I feel like we all go through this, when I was in that phase as a hip hop fan where all I cared about was the technical skill of an MC, I used to get so fucking upset listening to those records. I was like, why wasn't this guy more appreciated from a commercial standpoint? Why did this shit stay underground? But as my tastes evolved a bit, I kind of understood that G-Rap's harsh delivery and the grimy hardcore beats, they just weren't palatable to a mainstream audience. Like listen to listening to Roots of Evil, the song Can't Stop the Shine is supposed to be the single. And listen to how intense and just abrasive and urgent G-Rap's flow is on that song. You kind of understand when you listen to stuff like that, why his music might have remained a bit more of an underground phenomenon. That's not to say that he doesn't have an impossible amount of accolades and respect in the hip hop community. I'm just saying from a commercial standpoint. But all that contextual stuff, of course, doesn't stop people like me from enjoying his music. And I was really psyched when this album, Return of the Dawn, got announced because it's been, what, like six years since we got a proper G-Rap solo album? So I've been casually listening to this project on and off since it came out. And I gotta say, if what you want is to hear Cool G-Rap coming at you with one carefully crafted, lyrically dexterous bar after another, you're definitely getting that here. Unlike vintage G-Rap, especially 90s G-Rap, things aren't really storytelling focused at all on here, which for me is a mild disappointment, but it's definitely a lyricism centered project, which is just not a shocker. You've got some crazy rhyme schemes being delivered with that trademark G-Rap flow. Some standouts are the, the first verse in Rest in Peace, fucking fire. The intro title track, Return of the Dawn, has some great lines like, I'll push a button on your life like a game controller. The guy definitely hasn't lost much of his violent edge. He says shit like, uh, on the song Time's Up, he says, my dick get hard for your death as soon as the wind blow. <laughs> like, one of my favorite things about listening to mafiosa rap and just any gangster rap that's less reality based is just getting to chuckle at those over the top lines that the MCs will throw at you. And just as a fan of rapping as an art, I really appreciate that extra attention to syllables and to turns of phrases. Like the song Criminal Outfit, even the hook is so meticulous with its internal rhymes, full clips, bullshit, 
Mobway, Dark Shades, Parkways. It all like kind of weaves together. And then coming out of that hook, those first bars that you get are just classic G-Rap. But what really helps this project more than anything is that G-Rap's many guest MCs keep up with them. Because this is a relatively feature heavy album. So G-Rap's chemistry with these artists as well as the quality of their individual verses could really make or break things here. But man, everyone brought their A-game. Sheik Louch's appearance on Capitol Hill is a favorite of mine, as are both Saigon and Terminology on what might be my favorite track on the album, Running. And Fred the Godson on Maclean. He has maybe, maybe the best line of the album when he says, my first MacBook uh, wasn't a computer, it was a manual. I just thought that was really clever. And you've got a song like World Is Mine, which what fan of lyricism doesn't want to hear Cool G Rap and Crooked Eye on the same beat? Which, by the way, it's interesting that he doesn't go by King Crooked here, which these days is what Crooked Eye now goes by. Maybe it's out of respect for the OG, or maybe it's just, I don't know what it is, but maybe I'm reading too much into it. But Crooked murders his verse on here. He has a great pun using the, the pronunciation of the word mill, referring to it both as millions of dollars and as a meal as in breakfast. Get it? His first meal. Also, I'm really pleasantly surprised at how much I dig the production on this thing, because production, to say the least, has been an issue on past G-Rap projects. Some people would even say that production was the Achilles heel on albums that could have been classics like 456. But this whole thing was produced by a guy named Moss, who I was unfamiliar with, but looking up his production discography, he has a credit on Obi Trice's Cheers album, the deluxe edition. So I've been exposed to his work just without knowing it. In a way, Moss is the MVP here because he gives G-Rap such a fitting soundtrack that has some grit to it, but also a good amount of slickness as well. Like I mentioned the song Running, which might be my favorite. Wonderful, tuneful instrumental on that one with these rattling open hi-hats, some piano, most prominently these smooth saxophones. The song Maclean, the beat in that one has a real exotic Eastern tinge to it. I also got to shout out the song Popped Off for having this organ loop in it that I just cannot get out of my head. I really like the weeping loop in the Capitol Hill beat too, which that song also has a real strong hook to it, which I guess if I had to poke and prod at a specific weakness on this LP, it's that some of the hooks really feel like afterthoughts, which I predicted would happen on an album like this. But the good news is that it's not like a consistent album ruiner, thanks to memorable ones like Capitol Hill, which just has this classic in the trenches vibe to it. Dad, here she get ugly. But on a track like Time's Up, the refrain in that song is so low key and so unassuming. Like I'm pretty sure G-Rap's vocals in the hook are even mixed lower than his verse vocals. Like it's even mixed like an afterthought. And then a song like Rest in Peace barely has a hook. So I mean, if you're looking for an album that will draw you in with big choruses, you should probably look elsewhere. But if you're a G-Rap fan and you're watching this video, you probably knew that already. But I'm really liking this project. It's a great album to just ride to thanks to Moss's awesome production. There's not a dud beat on here. It's a quick 11 tracks that never overstay their welcome. And on here, G-Rap is, he's an elder statesman of the genre still bringing heat, which is just fucking inspiring to hear. So if hip hop like this is up your alley as it is mine, definitely check this thing out. Return of the Dawn gets a seven out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music and I'll see you guys soon.